Howdy, clodhoppers. So I'm planning on going outside and cutting some asparagus. The asparagus has gotten away from me this week. Our comfrey is blooming. It looks quite happy there between the two tumblers. Wouldn't you say so, Colt? Well, he ran off way too quick. <laughs> so here is the asparagus bed. Colt, get out. Colt! I'm going to have to put up a fencing around this bed or that dog is just going to tear everything up. Colt! Okay, so I think these are fresh starts because they are small, but they've already gone to the fern-like stage. So I think that's first year's growth. And so um, I'm going to let those grow a bit and then next year I'll try to start harvesting the asparagus spears. The reason I think these are first year starts is because if you look, the more established asparagus has gotten really tall before it has started um, the ferning out process. So I think once it gets established, it's in the edible stage longer. Um, and so that tells me that this one has been here for a while, whereas this is fresh and new. But I'm not disappointed because, true, I can't harvest this this year, but I know that that is food for the future. Oh, look, there's a tiny one coming out. Well, actually, it's not tiny, but it's a little fresh sprout of asparagus. So, yay. <laughs> now, these taller ones, I'm going to have to feed most of it to the rabbits. The rabbits love it. Um, I'll just keep the tender tops. That looks like that might be edible for us. The rest I'll give to the rabbits. I may not harvest my asparagus uh, the most ideal way. I've read that um, some people cut it below the ground. I tend to cut it right at the ground, maybe half an inch above. Um, my thinking is if the animals eat it, Usually they're not going to eat it much lower than that, so I just kind of go with what I think is a little more natural. Now having said that, that may reduce my yield. Now normally I don't harvest them this tall, but these were some that had gone um, farther and actually with how easily these are coming out, I think those are leftovers from last year and I left them so that I would know where the asparagus is located. So I'm just gonna continue harvesting. I don't have my stand with me, so I can't do a quick time lapse, but essentially all I do is I use my knife to cut at the base, and then I'll go ahead and um, give the more woody or, or harder stuff to the rabbits, and then I'll keep the softer tips to use for our food. All right, so here is my harvest. Now, granted, not all of that may be tender enough for us to eat. I may have to cut some of these shorter, but again, whatever we don't eat uh, will go to the rabbits, so nothing is wasted here on the homestead. Again, these will go to the bunnies. I could leave them here as compost in place, but I like to give some treats to the bunnies periodically. One thing I would like to do with this asparagus bed is essentially leave the whole area as an asparagus bed. It's kind of hard to see because our weeds have overgrown, but there are rocks lining the edge of this bed. It was a bed created by the previous owners, and I decided uh, to just leave it that way. I would like to do some companion planting in this asparagus bed. I'm thinking probably basil and tomatoes because I've read those do well with asparagus but I can't do that until I get the fencing up because if I put basil and tomato plants in here um, as you saw how Colt ran through it <laughs> he would destroy um, the tomato and basil plants. Now I've also heard of people putting strawberry plants with asparagus. So I might throw some of those in there as well. That's actually a project that Justin Rhodes has worked on within the last week or so, 
is uh, planting asparagus with strawberries. So that gives me a couple of options of ways to make this bed more prolific. Part of the reason I want to companion plant, besides the fact that I, I like how you can use one plant to help another plant grow by either deterring pests or like complementing the flavor of the other plant, I want to be able to cover this area with plants that we can use instead of having to constantly battle weeds. Plus, because asparagus spreads by the roots or the rhizomes, what I was finding when I was weeding is I've got asparagus plants coming up all throughout this bed, but they're tiny until they get well established. So if I'm weeding, I have to be very careful or I end up killing those little starts. So if we had this bed fully planted in edibles, there will be less weed pressure because there'll be less sunlight getting to the soil and the, um, the tomatoes and basil and strawberries uh, will be able to be like a ground cover. Now I still plan on mulching this bed and honestly this bed needs to be fertilized and mulched again. We've done some in the past um, but I haven't done anything intensively this uh, year. I think I may have put some wood chips on recently but as you can see not tons because I've got plenty of ground that's just visible. But again I've got tiny tiny asparagus coming up all over the place so I really don't want to put the wood chips down now because I don't want to um, cause the asparagus not to have enough sunlight. I don't want to compete with the young asparagus shoots. I want to let them grow. So eventually I do plan on putting some manure in this area to help uh, fertilize it but I want to wait until after the asparagus growing season is done because I really don't want to put manure on an area where I'm cutting ready to eat vegetables that are low lying to the ground. Now if it was a tomato plant I wouldn't worry so much because the manure is on the ground, the tomatoes that I'm harvesting are far off the ground. But with asparagus, since you're cutting the growth that's right there next to where the manure would be, I would rather just wait until the season's over, put the manure down, put some wood chips down, let it age for several months, and then I would feel okay um, with being able to harvest again the next season. I don't like to be paranoid, but I do like to be cautious because, you know, I don't think salmonella would kill us because we're in decent physical condition, but I don't want to be sick if I don't have to be. So a little bit of prevention will help. But I still plan on using that resource that's readily available to us from the chickens, goats, and rabbits because that manure, man, plants love it. <laughs> I am now in the kitchen and I have rinsed off the asparagus. I've cut up the longer pieces that I plan on giving to the rabbits and then whatever is still kind of woody or tough on these um, asparagus spears I'll throw in there into that container um, also to give to the rabbits. I have the frozen asparagus that I've cut up within the past few weeks and I'm just going to add to this bag until the bag is full and I just keep putting it in the freezer each time. Now some people may blanch their asparagus. I honestly don't bother with that because I feel that our family will be eating it soon enough that um, blanching isn't necessary. But absolutely do whatever you feel is best and safest for your family. I also plan on putting a few of these uh, asparagus spears in the refrigerator. We have a friend coming over to visit this weekend and I would like for her to try some raw asparagus in a salad if she's never done that before. 
So I have a jar with a little bit of water and I'm just going to put the spears standing upright in that jar. And from what I've heard and read and seen on Pinterest, um, it helps keep the asparagus fresher because like celery, the asparagus will continue to draw up the water and it'll keep the asparagus from going limp. Now, granted, she's coming um, today and she'll be here through tomorrow. So even if we were just to chop it up and put it in the vegetable crisper drawer, it would stay uh, crisp enough in just the two days. But I figured it'd be a good time to try this method. And if it keeps it even fresher, why not try the jar method? I have finished chopping up the asparagus. And so this is going to be what we'll save for Kathy. Maybe some of it will be uh, for the salad. And then maybe I'll do my saute slash steaming um, dish that I do with like garlic and butter. Um, since there were several that I was able to save. I got the bag a little more full. It's still not completely full. So I will continue to fill that as the season progresses. And then the bunnies have a lot of asparagus stalks to enjoy. Well, I hope you found this video at least informative. And I hope you all have a great day, Claude Hoppers. God bless. Thanks for watching the video. Push the thumbs up to like the video. Also, hit that subscribe button, also the bell, so that you can get notifications when our videos come out. Check us out on our social media pages, too. We have Facebook and Pinterest, and soon we'll have Instagram. The links are below. Bye, y'all! Bye! <laughs> Good job. Hmm.